One of the biggest things that I've seen continue through time in the Minecraft community is secret base design. Because the thing is, is that with the amount of creative freedom that Mojang lends you in this game, there's certainly a lot of different ways you can hide things and a lot of different ways you can make the act of hiding them very, very cool. I myself, although poorly, have designed some of these secret base entrances. And although I do like designing them, I'm not really a door person. And there are a bunch of people on YouTube who are significantly better at designing doors than I ever will be. So instead, I'll be addressing the kind of slightly less talked about facet of secret base design, and that's how you trigger the door that actually you walk through. Now you could do the very simple thing and just go with a torch key, or a lever key, or even nowadays you could just use a skulk sensor in a very specific spot, but I believe there's a whole variety of much cooler solutions you could have, and I believe that choosing a cool key is just as important as choosing a cool door. So today's video is generally just going to be about all the tiny little keys I've designed for activating hidden doors, but primarily we're going to be discussing this absolute monstrosity of a player detector that I put together that should never be used in any circumstance, but I designed it anyways. I'm going to start off this escapade with this rail key that I've actually shown in a different video of mine, but you don't have to go watch it because I'm just going to explain it right here. Here all you have to do is place a rail down, and that's going to go ahead and open your door. Now what it does is it actually just, by placing a rail here, you change the angle of this rail to turn into a sloped rail facing this direction. As you can see, with this rail, it changes. Then we simply move it over to the left and pull out the block from underneath it, which destroys it. In the back here, we can return the rail to its original state by moving this rail over briefly, which angles it back to this block, such that we can use it again. Two other very short designs I came up with while I was kind of making the idea for this video was this netherite key. Not very complex, but I just thought it looks cool. Just uses a slime block, some powdered snow, some string, and an observer. This other design is pretty neat. It uses a bone meal detector as the key for a door. Much better for overworld applications. And it just has this string of grass blocks, which usually the bone meal from this grass spreads down to the lower layer, spawning some kind of vegetation, which is quickly detected and removed, and it works about, I'd say, 80% of the time. Now on to the more obscure stuff. This is something that I kind of pondered putting into a short video, but I eventually just saved it for this. So this is what I call the bump switch. You bump into the wall and it opens a door doesn't use a skulk sensor or any of that, it actually just uses a boat that slightly clips through this corner, and when you nudge into it, it actually hits this pressure plate. What puts the boat back into an inactive position is this other boat, which has some careful alignments using this amethyst and some other shenanigans, and what that means is that by pushing up against it, we can open a door, and unless you have hitboxes on, it's completely invisible. This design obviously has its flaws, and that's because you could just accidentally walk into it, which makes it not great for a super secret secret base design, but then again, most of us just end up showing our secret bases to other people anyways because we think they're cool, so secrecy is not really something huge I'm going for. Also, you can also just get into the boat. <laughs> Overall, the most I can see this being used in is like a dark corner where you can just simply walk into it to open a door somewhere, and it saves the need of having to carry like a button or a redstone torch key, where this is entirely hands-free. Now on to the extreme stuff. This is a scaled up, more inconvenient, more useless version of this design that accomplishes no new things except being flush with the floor. So what exactly does it do? In short, it detects when you walk over this block. Now unfortunately, that demonstration might not immediately explain why the hell there are 12 minecarts and a boat on the system and two wither skulls, but I promise I'll get to that section. Just give me a sec, okay? Let's start off with the foundation of the idea. This is the bump switch, I just showed it to you, and here we're nudging a boat, which is wedged in a wall. What I wanted to do instead was nudge something in the floor, and here we're nudging a minecart that is flush with the floor. What's so special about this minecart though, is that we can actually detect when it moves around, but also that it is so invisible. Because the thing is, is that minecart hitboxes poke slightly above where their physical appearance is, 
meaning that by achieving a perfect alignment, this minecart can poke outside of the ground without us actually being able to see it. Now, as you may have guessed, this alignment is a little difficult to achieve. I don't even know if you can see with the resolution of YouTube, but it pokes out just a tiny bit. That tiny bit has to be less than 0.0125 blocks. In fractions, that is about an 80th of a block, according to my marginally delusional calculations. So let's talk about how we actually got that. See, the way most of these super stupid alignments are actually achieved is through the use of boats and minecarts. You see, we know the heights of these entities, and by stacking them in particular fashions, adding up multiples of these two numbers, we can create very specific heights. We can also stack these stacks of boats and minecarts on top of predetermined block heights that are also very specific, like snow height layers or enchantment tables, and this allows us to achieve desired setups. These stacking has a variety of uses in technical Minecraft, for example, is wither cages. In order to keep a wither contained, you want to prevent it from flying up. In that case, you might have a very specific stack of boats on top of their head, but today's video is not really about that. The first thing about stacking the minecarts, these are real numbers that we can work with in a mathematical sense outside of Minecraft, meaning I can just add them up in a calculator without having to actually manually stack minecarts to see if it actually works. As for choosing this initial block to start off, that's a whole other story. See, the first place that our journey for achieving the perfect alignment starts is this glorious spreadsheet by Razeworks. See, what they did is they compiled a massive spreadsheet of every single block alignment of every single side of every single block in the entire game in Minecraft, and it's just an incredible resource for figuring out stuff like this. It's also exactly where I got the alignments for boats, the values, as you can see, 0.5625 here, and a little bit higher, here's the minecart at 0.7. And what I was essentially doing was just trial and erroring, putting numbers together, crunching things, and trying to achieve that perfect interval I was looking for. The only problem was there was one other parameter that I had to set, and that was that there had to be two minecarts on top, which ended up being a problem for a couple designs. One of the most funny ways that that parameter of the two minecarts on top actually invalidated a design was that it forced the boats to be on the very bottom layer, or at least the second bottom layer, which actually resulted in the alignment block I was using, which was the lily pad, to be crushed. This actually made it impossible to use a smaller design than that one. So even after all of this and how complex everything might seem, there's still even one more bit. Here, I'm not even using a conventional block that I'm stacking minecarts on. They're on top of this boat in a bubble column against the chain. So why? See, the thing is, is most blocks in Minecraft are confined to the pixel grid. This is 15 pixels tall. This is 14 pixels tall, 13, 12, 11. You wouldn't have an 11.5 pixel tall block, at least until the chain. When Mojang added the chain, they made a strange design decision to do just that. If we look at this bed here, it's exactly 9 pixels tall. This end rod, the distance from this bottom surface to the top surface of the end rod, is 10 pixels. And the chain comes between that at a strange 9.5. Now, this makes it a really unique block type because suddenly we're escaping the confines of the 16 pixels of every block, and we're diving into new fractionals, which allow us to create newer alignments. Now the thing is, is that the top surface of the chain wouldn't work with everything I was using, but I somehow managed to still salvage it by using the bottom surface, by pressing a boat up against that with a bubble column, and stacking stuff on that. This is kind of actually also why the lily pad is a really interesting block type, because it just happens to be exactly one and a half pixels, which is also outside of the pixel boundary just like a chain is. So now that you understand how we achieve this crazy alignment, let's talk about the actual design. When we nudge this, it creates a chain reaction between these other minecarts, which causes either one of them to get jostled around just enough to be knocked off of this tiny little iron trapdoor ledge. This causes them to drop into the tripwire, get punched back up with the slime block, and then they're readjusted by these pistons. Now, this setup is actually the exact reason why we can't have a boat on this second to top layer. And that's because it would prevent us from putting minecarts on either side that would be adjusted by the central minecart. 
And yeah, it just wouldn't be possible if we had a boat here in the way, because it would push the minecarts too far out away from our detecting minecart. So that's it. The last thing I want to touch on is the system is incredibly fragile, which makes it even more stupid and useless. If I just nudge it too much here, this minecart actually falls off of the wither skull, which basically runs the entire system useless. So don't build this, I built it as a proof of concept for a possible floor based bump switch, and I never expected it to actually come to a design even as remotely developed as this one. This design though is actually pretty great and I recommend you build it. I'll make a schematic of it and I'll put it in the description, but you can also probably just build it just by looking at the alignments right here. Every block here is important, from the lantern to this amethyst shard to this wall. Anyways, that'll be it for today's video. If you like the con kind of content that I make, make sure to check out my other explanations on some of the other projects I've worked on, and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff, and I'll see you next time.